Welcome back to Fundamentals of Chest Radiography. Today we are going to talk about how to recognize a technically adequate chest radiograph and a little bit about chest anatomy. So every time you're looking at a chest x-ray, you should always assess for the following technical factors. Penetration, rotation, inspiration, magnification and angulation. Now let's take a look at these in detail. Penetration. Penetration in this sense means whether enough X-ray photons have traveled through the body and hit the detector. If the amount of X-ray photons is not enough, then you will have an underpenetrated image. This image appears much more bright and much more white than it should and uh, on this image I might mistakenly make the diagnosis of fibrosis or interstitial edema when in reality that is not the case. If too many x-ray photons travel through the body and thus hit the detector I will not see lung markings, I might miss nodules on this image and I might mistakenly call this a pneumothorax or an emphysema when this patient might not have any abnormalities present at all. So as a rule of thumb, when you look at the image, you should see the thoracic spine through the heart shadow, but not too much like you see it over here. Rotation is important because if the patient is rotated either to his right hand side or his left hand side, then the normal anatomy that you are accustomed to might appear completely different than it should. And the way to check for rotation is to draw an imaginary vertical line through the spinous processes and measure the distance from that line to the clavicular head on the left hand side and on the right hand side. And if, for example, that uh, length is uh, larger on the left hand side, then you can deduce that the patient was rotated towards his left while the image was taken. Here are two examples. The patient on this case, in this case, is rotated to his right hand side because you can see that the distance between the spinous process and the right clavicular head is larger than uh, the same length from the spinous process to the left clavicular head and thus there is actually an uh, abnormality, a mass, which appears over here. But this is not a true mass, that's just due to the fact that the patient has been rotated to his left, to his right hand side. Now this other image is uh, again completely off. The heart appears quite large, the mediastinal structures are nowhere near normal because the patient has been rotated to his left. Again, if you recall back uh, last week's lecture, um, I mentioned that when the, the patient is uh, in front of the detector, he or she is asked to take in a deep breath and then the radiographer will push the button and the image will be taken but rested inspiration is very very important because otherwise the normal structures will appear blurred etc and uh, we also want a nice deep breath from the patient so as to have uh, the full view or, or as close to the as close to full view of the lungs as possible now you should uh, always count the ribs from top to bottom. So here is the first rib on the right hand side, the second rib. This is actually the dorsal aspect of the second rib. This is the anterior aspect of the second rib. Here's rib number three, four, five and six. And if you can see the anterior aspect of the sixth rib just above the diaphragm, then you can deduce that inspiration was done correctly. Now here's the same patient, but 
in this situation the inspiration wasn't done properly and if you count the ribs so this is one two three four five rib number six this is the anterior this is the dorsal sorry the dorsal aspect of the sixth rib and the anterior part of this sixth rib touches or even overlaps with the right hemi diaphragm so this is not good and uh, you might actually make out that there is some uh, crowding some uh, increased uh, opacity down here in the basal uh, segments which again might be mistaken for interstitial edema or even fibrosis but that's not true that's just due to some technical factors if the patient takes in a proper breath then those lines will completely disappear and you will just see the normal lung markings that should be there uh, as we expect them to be here's an image that will help you in counting ribs i annotated this image and there's also the representative uh, anatomical image but if you go back to a couple seconds ago in this video then uh, you will you will see how easy it is to count ribs you just need to get accustomed to it just just uh, try it out a couple times and you'll be good to go <clears throat> magnification is also something that we want to avoid because we want to see the true size of organs we don't want them to be magnified but as a rule of thumb you should keep in mind that the closer an organ is to the detector the more true its actual size on the resulting image will be and uh, that's especially important to keep in mind when you're looking at a supine image so here are two images of the same patient the image on the left was taken in uh, in uh, in supine position the one on the right was taken in uh, in uh, the proper position when the patient was uh, standing up probably a couple days later when the, when the patient got better and you can see that on the supine image the heart appears quite large the mediastinum appears wide and uh, so this is this is not the true size of the patient's organs and uh, so for one it has to do with the fact that when we image patients in the supine position that's a that's an AP image so the x-ray source is in front of the patient the detector is behind the patient and so that'll cause magnification of the structures which are farther away from the detector another reason is that uh, when you have a bad side image then the x-ray source needs to be closer to the detector than when you are uh, obtaining an image when the patient is standing up on its own and uh, these magnifying effects are more pronounced the closer you are to the x-ray source okay so there are two reasons one is the x-ray source to film distance and the second one is that the the farther away objects are from the detector the the greater their size will appear on the resulting image so if possible have the patient stand up or at least have them sit up supine images will always be a little bit misleading angulation we have also mentioned this before but just as a reminder when we image patients in uh, in a standing position the x-ray photons travel parallel to the floor so they hit the body in a per perpendicular manner and uh, that's good because that's that's the way we want them to if uh, if patients are obtained properly then the clavicular heads will have this uh, nice s shape and they will appear 
just about here between the third and the fourth ribs. Now you can imagine that you have a you have a sick patient who is who is able to to stand up, but he he, he has difficulty standing up. So he needs to sort of um, lean back towards the detector, and um, he needs to be facing the X-ray source. So you have a P uh, an anterior to posterior type of image. Now. In, uh, in this situation, the X-ray photons will travel up towards the, the head and that will cause the clavicles to, have, uh, to assume a more horizontal um, morphology and they will project just above the second or even the first rib. This this image might be familiar to you because this is a special view, the apical view, which we use actually in um, clinical practice when we want to make sure that uh, the nodule that we saw on the PA film is a true nodule. But uh, if you if you see this type of uh, morphology on a PA chest X-ray then you should always consult your radiographer and ask her or him um, what might have gone wrong and whether he or she can repeat the image so that uh, we get the normal appearance of the chest x-ray and as i said the clavicle the clavicles will assume um, an abnormal shape and uh, you might also see blurring of the diaphragms of diaphragm, sorry, then uh, uh, or if uh, if you have uh, an angulation during imaging. Let's dive a little bit into normal chest anatomy. So, when you're looking at a chest X-ray, you should uh, only see the transparent or air-filled lungs and some lung markings. The lung markings are made up of uh, vessels, so arteries and veins, and some interstitial markings. The bronchi also uh, are or can be visible on, uh, on the chest x-ray. However, you do not see any lung markings out here at the periphery. Some people call this the cortex of the lung, which is actually not a true anatomical term, but still in, in practice um, some people use this uh, term and uh, another thing that might be visible are the fissures between the lobes sometimes you see the horizontal fissure over here on the right hand side separating the right upper lobe from the middle lobe and on this image you don't you don't see it but I'll, but I'll show you an image later and on the lateral view most of the time we see the major fissures separating the upper lobes from the lower lobes or on the right hand side the upper lobe and the middle lobe from the lower lobe and so here is the horizontal fissure on the right hand side just this very very thin almost horizontal line an accessory fissure which is very similar or almost a mirror image of that might appear on the left hand side this we call the left horizontal fissure what is more common is to see an azygous fissure which appears in the in the upper third of the right lung so again this thin white curvy line and on the end there is this uh, white dot which represents the azygous vein so this is all normal but um, it's a it's a variant that we might see in about let's see two out of a hundred or so not not more i have uh, said before that uh, inspiration is is very important and uh, when you assess whether the patient took in a deep enough breath you look at the diaphragm now Please keep in mind that we have one diaphragm and we have a right hemidiaphragm and a, and a left hemidiaphragm. 
the right hemidiaphragm usually appears a little bit higher than the left hemidiaphragm. That's, that's normal. When you look at the hyla, the left hilum is normally a little bit more cranial than the right hilum. And in between the aortic knob, or I can show you that on this image, so just below the aortic knob and just above the left pulmonary artery, there is this uh, transparent or dark area which contains just, just some amount of fat. That's called the aortopulmonary window. If there are lymph nodes within this area, then uh, you will see some added opacity. So always check for this one. And uh, here's a nice drawn image uh, overlapping a normal chest x-ray, showing you the different anatomical entities and how they appear on the chest x-ray. So again, the diaphragm, the claustrophenic angle, and then some fissures, the horizontal fissure, or you might even see the oblique fissure, even on the right-hand side and uh, on the left-hand side as well. Much of the heart's shadow is made up by the right ventricle. Some of it is represented by the left ventricle, the left atrium, and the right atrium. The tracheal air column appears on the top of the image in the midline and then gradually you see less and less of the main bronchi either on the right hand side or the left hand side. The major vessels appear in this area. To the right of the tracheal air column you have the superior vena cava. To the left you'll see the aortic arch and then as you go towards the abdominal cavity you'll see the descending aorta. The pulmonary trunk appears to the right of the aortic arch and just below it and then as a mustache you will see the left and then you'll see the right main pulmonary arteries appear and uh, last but not least just below the left hemidiaphragm you'll see a gastric air bubble with a variable size and shape in about 90% of the time it should be it should be here. The lateral view is I said uh, before very important. It's important not only to localize to, to locate certain entities that we see on the PHS x-ray or to confirm presence of disease that we saw on the PHS x-ray but we might also make a diagnosis on the on the lateral view. First and foremost, you should see the outline of the sternum. Behind the sternum is a clear area. This we call the retro sternal space. So uh, quite a transparent area. Then you'll see the heart and behind the heart is the retro cardiac space, also quite transparent. However, Please observe that uh, as you go from, from cranial to caudal or from top to bottom and you observe the vertebral bodies, the vertebral bodies gradually become more and more dark or more and more transparent because up here there's a lot of soft tissues that the X-ray photons uh, need to penetrate versus down here where you basically just have a lot of lung and lung doesn't attenuate the x-ray photons as much so this area will appear gradually darker again the left and the right hemidiaphragms appear down here if you have a keen eye you might uh, make the distinction between the two because as you recall the left hemidiaphragm is a little bit higher than the right hemidiaphragm and um, I'm sorry, I might have made a mistake here. So the right hemidiaphragm is a little bit higher than the left hemidiaphragm and the gastric air bubble is closer to the left hemidiaphragm than it is to the right hemidiaphragm. And uh, as a take-home message, 
no matter how you approach the chest x-ray no matter in which order you look at the organs that are represented on the image you should always stick to your own pattern because if you do not stick to your pattern if you approach the image uh, differently each and every time you see a chest x-ray then you're going to make a mistake but if you have your own pattern and you stick to it the chances of you making a mistake is is less and less so the way i look at the chest x-ray i always start with the diaphragm i uh, try to assess whether inspiration was done properly i look at the borders of the or, the or the the outline of the diaphragm i compare the costophrenic angles then from top to bottom i compare the two lungs their transparency and uh, just their gradual their, ge their general appearance then i look at the tracheal air column and work my way down towards the mediastinum and the heart and in between i see the aortic knob the right and the left main bronchus the pulmonary arteries the heart and then uh, we should always spend a couple seconds on uh, assessing the bones and the soft tissues because they might also show us or tell us that there is underlying pathology now with that in mind let's uh, focus on some blind spots that appear on the frontal chest x-ray these are these are uh, key areas that are very important because um, most of the times when 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 a radiologist makes a mistake based on a chest x-ray he or she does so because he forgot to look at a blind spot so the central airways are considered to be blind spots because um, of course they they can be seen but they are they're quite faint uh, faint areas the lung apices sometimes might not even appear on the image but of course if that's the situation we should always consult the radiographer and ask for a for the repeated image but uh, as you can see there is there's too much uh, overlapping here at, at least to um, bony structures are overlapping and that might be misleading in some cases the mediastinal and the hilar structures are difficult to assess because um, again there are quite a lot of uh, vessels that overlap and you need to see lots and lots of chest x-rays to be able to make out the abnormal from the abnormal the retrocardiac region is very difficult to assess on the PHS x-ray that's why every time you you image a patient um, you should also get a lateral view either from the right hand side or the left hand side that's that's for that's usually up for you to decide but uh, there's no other way to properly assess the retrocardiac and the retrosternal region the lung bases are virtually invisible so if you look at the, the diaphragm you should know that there is quite a lot of volume of lung down below the diaphragm that is not visible on the PHS x-ray but if you obtain a lateral view then those segments will be visible for you as well the thoracic skeleton is something that page that sometimes um, uh, radiolo radiologists do not spend enough time on so always take a couple seconds to look at uh, the, even the humeral heads the scapulae the clavicles the vertebral bodies the ribs etc because they might be home to metastatic foci for example and uh, last but not least let's not forget that even though this image was carried out in order to assess for any chest abnormalities some of the upper abdominal cavity is visible so you should always take at least a glance and um, you know look for signs of free air or some major calcification etc 
So these are the blind spots. And I hope you learned a lot in today's lesson. I will see you next week. Until then, take care.